The Godox SL60W is a light that I've had for over a year and a half that I never intended to use as much as I have. It's a great value not only for the money, but for its versatility. Like every product, especially one at this price point, there are always going to be pros and cons, and we're going to go over those today. Let's hit it. Hey everybody and welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Jeff Fagan and today we're talking about using the Godox SL60W for YouTube and content creation. So I bought the SL60W in mid 2019 to use as a key light for some of my YouTube videos. When I decided to start this channel, I needed something and I didn't want to have to set up a lighting setup every single time I wanted to do these talking heads. So I wanted to have a light that I could leave at home and not have to take apart every time I had a gig. So the whole prospect of setting everything up and taking it apart for gigs is what kept me from doing a channel for so long. So buying this light actually kind of gave me the kickstart I needed to start the channel. I noticed the price of the SL60W was pretty cheap at the time, and it's actually cheaper now, and the link is in the description below. After that, I bought a generic 24 by 36 softbox that had double diffusion and an egg crate grid, and I figured that would be enough to get started. Since then, I've bought a few of the SL60Ws as well as the SL150 Mark IIs and the FV150s. I've just purchased a lot of Godox lights because they give you a lot of value for the money. So first, let's talk about the pros. So this light is small and durable, so it's easy to travel with locally, especially because there's no ballast on this light like similar products have. So since the electronics are built into the light, it makes the SL60W nice and compact. Next is the Bowens mount. It's very strong, which means you can use use a variety of different soft boxes or bones mount accessories. Third, a lot of people complain about the fan noise, but I got to admit it's really not that bad. The version of the light that I have is not that loud and it is barely noticeable even at full power, but if you are in extremely quiet rooms, you will notice the noise. It doesn't really show up in my audio, but it is worth noting there is some noise, but it's really just not that bad. Now, if I was shooting a feature film, probably wouldn't go with this light. But for YouTube content creation, this light is great for the money. And let's talk about the next pro, which is the yoke. The yoke is pretty strong and I've put some heavy soft boxes on it. So I'm pretty confident that this light can handle some stronger soft boxes. This does, however, lead us into the cons. So although the yoke is strong, it is a hard plastic and it's not made out of metal, so it does concern me that for people who are not going to use this for YouTube, where this light is basically going to be in the same place all the time. For instance, my SL60W is here in the studio and I never move it, never really change it other than turning the light on and off. So for those who are going to use it on a regular basis and you're going to be traveling with the light, the plastic yoke may be of a concern. So the second con revolves around the COB LED light, which is square shaped. The reason that's an issue is it can create a weird light fall off in the corners, especially with parabolic soft boxes. That's one of the reasons you see a lot of the newer COB lights have a circular LED chip. So one minor con to this light is the fact that you cannot use external battery solutions with this light. You're gonna have to be plugged into AC power. So if you're using it as a YouTube light and you're in a home studio or you're really using it anywhere where you can be plugged into house power, then that's not really gonna be an issue. But if you wanted to try and use this light in the field, that's gonna be a non-starter with the SL60W. The last con is the minimum power setting. The light only lets you go down to a minimum of 10%, which is a bummer if you really don't need that much light. For my YouTube YouTube videos, I use a technique called the inverse square principle. So the light and the softbox is really close to my face. It's less than a foot away, but the light is actually not really that bright since it's so close to my face. It's actually at 23%, which is why a light like the Godox SL60W works so great. Uh, I had an Aperture 120D, but I just was not using the full capability of that light. And for the money, the SL60W just made way more sense and I can use the 120Ds on a lot of my paid work. Overall, for the money, the SL60W from Godox really can't be beat and I still plan on using it for a long time. So what are your thoughts on the Godox SL60W? Let me know in the comments below, and if you have any questions, let me know down there as well. If you guys got value out of today's video, please make sure to smash that like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. And until next time, my name's Jeff Fagan. I'll see you guys in the next video.